Despite Coyote's clear desire to stand on her own two feet, Paco needs to help her through the door into the steam seamstress's union. Heads raise, and the front door, front room of the bar falls strangely quiet. Paco stands by her side now, not speaking, his dark eyes flat with fury. Coyote presses a rag to her clawed-up face. She winces, but manages to keep control as she breathes in slow, deep breaths to manage the pain. Taking a closer look, you see her arm isn't much more than shreds of meat and broken bone held together by tendons and burned skin. It'll be a miracle if she still has it by the end of the night. Nasty. All right. Every time. Every time. All right. Miss Kubota is tending bar herself when Paco walk carries the mangled, bleeding coyote into the union. As soon as the boss lady lays her eye is on the missing bartender, the place gets quiet. Fast. By the time she rounds the bar to meet you, coyote is the color of wet spackle and there's something new in her eyes. Fear. This woman has faced down hell highlands, but the sound of Miss Kubota staring at the f um, has her staring at the floor and mumbling. Woman, how dare you miss two shifts and then come back in and bleed on my floor? I'm sorry, Miss Kubota. That run went bad. So, ka! I can see that. Your arm is a mess. Was this your crusade again? Don't answer. It'll only upset me further. You caused me to worry about you, Coyote, and that distracted me from my business. Hi. Miss Kubota, my apologies again. Cherry, take her downstairs to Dr. Castle. Yes, ma'am. Hey, Cherry, what's up? Tell Castle to put something new and shiny where that arm used to be. Miss Kubota, I can't afford a cyber arm. I'm aware of your financial situation. When you're healed, we will discuss the concept of Geary, a debt of honor. Now go bleed elsewhere. Yes, ma'am. Two more karma. Heading downstairs. Her anger at Coyote's rashness slowly washes from her eyes and is replaced by tears. She sniffs and wipes them away and inclines her head to you. Domo arigato, Mac. That girl is precious to me. It's not often that we see acts like these in the Barrens. You've performed a great service for my little family, and I welcome you into my home. Consider it yours while your work keeps you here. Yes! But we both know that words are mere air. Beyond thanks, my... I offer you this remuneration. Please take it as a show of respect. I'm honored, Miss Kubota. Thank you. You're most welcome, and I offer more than simple lodging. You find that there's more to the Union than meets the eye. Like Transformers. Below us is a small facility available exclusively for discriminating independent operatives like yourself. In it, you'll find vendors selling the best gear the black market has to offer, a fully equipped cyber dock, and a secure place to rest when their dreck hits the fan, as they say. My, you are quite the entrepreneur. Indeed, normally I require of a percentage of the runner's income for use of this facility, but as I said, your family now. Consider it on the house. To gain entrance, play G-A-F-F-C on the piano. Gaffic. All right, thanks. Um, let's head on downstairs. Dude, Paco is still following me. Didn't he take... Oh, Cherry took him. All right, well, let's go over here. I am not looking for a date, buddy. Um, Miss Cooley, here, Mr. Clean, Johnny Clean, that was it. Hey, Johnny Clean, what's up? Johnny Clean leans on a seemingly brand new mop, surveying the crowd at the Union. Hey, Johnny, I'm looking for Cherry, where Cherry took Coyote. Piano's a little out of tune, check it out. The guy knows everything. Everything. Um, the piano looks like it's been here since the Union was built. It doesn't look like anyone has played it in earnest for almost as long. And I'm gonna play the code. As you slowly peck the notes out on the keyboard, they spark a faint memory of wonder, immediately forgotten as the entire piano slides to the left, revealing a hidden staircase. You descend the stairs into the Union safe house. Good deal. Entrepreneur Miss Kubota has combined everything a runner might need into one-stop shopping experience. A black market equipment, uh, cyber dock, blah, blah, blah. I wish those things would stick around a little more, but all right. Um, let's hang out. Go Wolves. All right. Um, hey, cool. Here's some of my stuff that's in stash. My pistol. I could take my pistol with me if I wanted. I really don't think it's that useful, but I guess for now I might as well. Dex, drones. All right. My goal for this character is, um, although I'm not going to deck anything, I'm going to try to get hacked up, spliced up like a Saber Samurai. So let's go. Oh god, look, 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 look. It's Coyote's arm. 
Okay, uh, sorry. Bad joke. All right, let's do this. Make it quick. I need to operate. Thanks for helping me out back there. Looks like you could use a hand. Ouch. Bad joke right now. She looks down at her mangled arm. Okay, folks. I'm going to have to ask you to sit in the waiting area. Go watch some trivet or something. This young lady and I have work to do. I want something badass. Got one with a laser inside? You'll take what I give you, lady. Now have a look at it. Let's have a look at your face. Leave it. Excuse me. Coyote. I earned this face by being stupid, and I'm going to keep it. End story. Whatever you say, kid. With one swift motion, she sinks a syringe into so Coyote's thigh. Nighty night. Wow, she's up and about. All right. Coyote looks both better and worse than you last saw her. All the gaping holes are plugged, and she's sporting a shiny new cyber arm. But now that the adrenaline has worn off, it's clear she needs some rest. Good morning. Thanks to this miracle of modern science combined with Doc Castle's magical healing powers, I'm almost as good as new. Better, really. I'm going to talk about Sam. Sam Watts, what about him? Well, first and foremost, dude's dead. Holy dreck, Sam. Can't say I'm surprised. He was on a downward spiral for a long time. What can I tell you? Tell me about Sam. I hear he liked you. I did. He made me laugh. No one else seemed to like Sam's jokes, but I did. No accounting for taste. Sam had made some bad jokes. Not when he was sober. He was chill and funny. I guess I knew him best of everyone here. I'm sorry he's gone. Uh, Coyote, you served Sam the night he died. What do you remember about that night? Pretty average night. Regular crowd as I remember. Sam was drinking with a guy named Armitage. Jake Armitage? Yeah, you know him. Met him. He's a charmer, too. She bites her lower lip. I like gingers. Oh, dude, you got a girl f boyfriend. Fuck it. Uh, what? You know what? It's your choice, and I would ditch Paco. Jake at least has cool hair. Anyway, Jake and Sam were having a few, well, uh, Jake and Sam were having a few. T Sam was tossing him back, but good. Eventually, he got loud. The way he sometimes did when he mixed drinking with who knows what, and Miss Kubota had it, wanted him ejected. Mr. Clue wasn't around, and I can't remember why, so she, I, I, she asked Jake to do the honors. Jake dragged him out back into the alley, and that's the last time I saw Sam. He's saying he got loud. You remember what he was saying? She thinks. Standard Sam Drek. How he grew up rich, didn't deserve this. How he hated his mother. How he loved his mother. It was pretty pathetic. Uh, you know where Sam lived? On the streets, mostly. He'd occasionally convince someone to let him flop their couch, but he'd always overstay his welcome and get kicked out after a few days. Sometimes I'd sneak him down here so he could crash in one of the bunks. He used one the night before I saw him last. How bad was his drinking? If it was just drinking, it could have it would have been bad, but it wasn't. He was, it wasn't the monogamous type. He dabbled in everything. Booze, chips, drugs. He loved the nitro. Whatever he could get his hands on. It wasn't always like that, though. But once he got sick, he started using more and more stuff to try and forget about it. Sam was sick? Dying. Didn't you know? Yeah, everyone could tell. You could just look at him and see he was a walking corpse. It had to be the drinking. Then he disappeared for a while, and one day he came back all better. Looks good, even. All better, just like that. He said his mom helped him out. Never said how, though. See, okay. So that's interesting, because Lucy, a blind Lucy from uh, the ship shack, she had a uh, guardian angel come in and buy her a set of eyes. And if Sam, Sam's drinking was making him sick, rusting out his liver and whatnot, if someone came in and operated on him, gave him a liver, and then came and repossessed it. I wonder. Sam have any enemies? Enemies, it's hard to say. Sam partied hard, and when he did, he ran his mouth off pretty good. Got his ass kicked on more than one occasion. But no, I don't think he had any enemies. At least none I'm aware of. Thanks, Coyote. Now I need you two to do something for me. God, okay. Shut up. I need you to talk to Mr. Delilah for me about the Royal Run. He's usually upstairs. Tell him I didn't get the gems. Maybe I can take another run at it when I recover. I will. No, you're not taking any more runs at anything. I got the gems. I'll, uh... I'm gonna, gonna go check his bunk. Alright. Bunk is a mess. It reeks of booze. Fair. Sh searching through the, the, blank the sheets, blankets, and pillow, you find an old photograph that's seen a lot of wear. Look at it. 
Picture is of a blonde boy and a girl, both about age 14, sitting on the dock at the edge of a lake. They appear to be twins. The boy is, has his arm tight around the girl's shoulders and is mugging for the camera. The girl is planting a kiss on his cheek while making rabbit ears behind his head with her fingers. Check the back of the photo. Written in a woman's hand are words Sam and Jessica. Lake Samish. 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 Summer 2040. 2040. Um, pocket photo. So Sam had a twin sister. That's an interesting bit of advice. I don't know. We'll see. There's my stash. I don't really need any of this stuff. But I could go and meet some of the people. Go meet some of the traders here. There's supposed to be a gun under. Hey, nice to meet you, Jeff. Um, what do you mean no credit? <laughs> All right, there's David. Let's try this guy. He looks like a weapons merchant. Theodore Buster Guberman is a well-groomed orc, dressed with the precision that, successed, or that suggests the straight lines of a military officer's uniform. His hair is cropped short, high and tight, as they say, and this neatness presents itself as only compromised by the uneven tusks protruding from his mouth. The only other defect in the, in the picture of perfection is the man's cybernetic right arm, which is obvious enough to be noticeable, but not so obvious as to ruin the line of his suit. When he speaks, the orc's voice is soft and thoughtful. Almost like he talk, and he talks almost exclusively in numbers, calibers, ranges, rounds per second, arc of fire, razoring factor, tensile strength, and of course, price. Bunker Buster Guberman, at your service. Friends call me Buster. I also answer to Sergeant, Sir, and even Theodore on occasion. Anytime you're in the market for firearms, ammunition, and ordnance, I'm your man. How can I help you? Let's take a look at what you got. I just got paid. All right, um... Some machine gun. I want a rifle. There's a, a, a this is basic assault rifle that's surprisingly good. This has got same damage. Not any better really. Baseball bat sucks. Um, drones. All right. Well, nothing he has is really that much better than me. Um. Sell items. I really don't need that, and I don't need that. Um, I really don't need, I'm just going to sell one of these, make some more money. Um, and a concussion grenade? No, oh, that's dumb. Get out of here. We're going to take a, we're going to take a frag grenade with us. Because if I'm throwing grenades, I want them to be real grenades. Alright, so... I think we're good. Um, I could take this new assault rifle, but its its range is the same, and its just capacity is smaller. So I really don't, or larger, but I don't care. All right. Um, do do do. All right, whatever. Thanks, Gruberman. Let's see. What else? What about this guy? Eric. What was your last name? Eric Mersman. Change your clothes, change your life, right? Not only will you look better. Not that you look bad now or anything, but each one will keep you on the right side of the ground. Take a look. Yeah, I might buy this stuff. More armor. Grants HP plus three. I think I'm going to do that. I'm going to buy that, even though it's expensive. And then I can swap that out. Um, wow. That's really weird looking, but cool, I guess. All right. Well, anyway, confirm. I'm gonna... Oh, a little glitch there. Alright, show what you have. I wanna sell my old clothing. There. No reason to keep that stuff around. Alright. Um, then let's go check out this guy. I think you're the magic guy. I can believe it. You might even be the magic guy from upstairs. No. You look high as fuck. All right, past the edges, uh, past the bar, the edges of the safe house become somewhat indistinct due to a magical haze surrounding this a particular elf. The man seems only half of this realm, his mind wandering the far horizons of astral space while his body pedals otherworldly wares. Let's see what you got, man. Could buy power bolt, but I couldn't use shit, so let's not do it. Um, let's go look at, see if we can get chopped up a little bit. We don't have that much money, but. Every inch of the tech alcove is covered in chaotic patchwork quilt of circuit boards, chips, wires, displays, and a million other things you can't identify. In the eye of this techno-bit storm stands a dwarf, immaculately dressed and supremely calm. Hey, man. 
David Fry the second. I know that look. Don't let the size of the shop fool you. I can get any Matrix hardware or software that exists. And if it doesn't exist, then I can make it for you. Any questions? Or I can answer anything, any gear you need. I, um... You know, that's great and all, but I really don't need any of this. Uh, oh, okay, sure. When you infiltrate a facility on a run, you will have a team. When you jack into the Matrix, you are all alone. That's where ESPs come in. An ESP is a highly advanced artificial life program which you deploy it manifests on another as another team member in the Matrix. Different types of ESPs have different abilities. Well, that's nifty, except I am as... Duh, duh, duh. Um, let's ask Johnny Clean why we're at... I stand out upstairs? No. Janitors never do. When I was younger, I had a rep for getting in and out of systems so cleanly that no one ever knew I was there. Half the Matrix runs on that earned... Half the Matrix runs that earned me that rep were made possible because I was able to get inside the facility posing as a janitor. Now it's just sort of part of me. Is it true that you were part of the Echo Mirage team? Let me take this one. Listen, I've known the guy for over a decade, and he's been smart enough not to tell me. So he's sure as hell not going to tell you about those days. For your health and his, best let the subject drop. Alright. Cool. That doesn't help me so much. I want to go become violently upgraded. Hey, Doc. In the Shadowrun circles, the term doctor is often used quite liberally to, to describe any sawbones with a needle and thread. But in the case of the Union's resident medical expert, nothing could be further from the truth. The safe house bulls, boasts a fully equipped medical suite, complete with shaman, shamanic fetishes, this six world medicine at the highest caliber. The doctor herself is an unassuming sword, perhaps the type to go unnoticed entirely, if not for the sprite, or sprightly spirit perched on her shoulder, like her own personal gargoyle. The spirit's burning eyes follow you constantly, even as the doctor's own eyes are buried in her charts. However, she does look up long enough to acknowledge your approach. I'm Dr. Castle, and I understand you were instrumental in bringing Coyote back to us. Thanks for that. And I suppose you were the one who patched her up. Impressive work. Thank you. It's a shame she wouldn't let me repair her face, though. She notes you eyeballing the facilities. I can tell you're surprised to find a full-service med bay under a dive bar in a slum. Don't be. This is a Shadowrunner bar, after all. Um, as a purveyor of cyberware and trauma kits, there's no better place to set up a practice. I patch up runners, install and maintain their cyberware, and provide medical supplies for the runs. I may not be as mobile as Doc, as Doc Wagon, but I'm the next best thing. Um, yeah, I want to see... I see shamanic fetishes. Are you a shaman too? Well, modern medical technology makes surgery less disruptive than it used to be. It's still an ordeal for both the body and the spirit, requiring extensive recuperation to properly heal. I'm trained in the ways of the spirit world as well, and the scientific world. I do my best to heal the whole patient. That's pretty cool. What's that on your shoulder? This little guy supports the healing rituals I perform on my patients after surgery, dramatically reducing their recovery time. Not standard procedure, of course, but the results speak for themselves. I want some cyberware. I can afford a data jack, and I can afford a cyber eye replacement that adds plus 3% to hit. That's not really even worth it. Let's just not hack myself up just yet. And, um... Let's see. Yes, technology. I can't do any of these. Let's just not. Let's just not. Let's just not. Alright. Hey, Coyote. I found something in this bunk Sam was using. A photo. Did you know Sam had a twin sister? Yeah, I did. He mentioned her once or twice. Didn't sound like they got along that well, she thinks. He was rambling on about her last time I saw him. By that point, he was completely gone. I didn't follow, couldn't follow what he was saying, but he sounded miserable. Your comlink chirps, and the screen shows a smiling face of Officer Aguera. He's smiling. It must be about money. Officer Aguera, what a pleasure to hear from you. Yeah, yeah, we're buddies. Let's go dancing soon. Listen, the Ripper got another one. What the fuck? Victim worked at the N um, NTSB investigation facility down on the docks. You owe me for this. Put it on my tab. You there now? Better get here quick before McCluskey arrives. Ah, I love that man. All right, let's get out of here. Another Ripper murder. Where? The docks. I've got to go. Okay, listen, I want to help. You dragged me out of the Royale before something bad happened. Worse than getting my arm torn off. And Sam was my friend. You head to the docks and I'll see if I can trap down Sam's sister Jessica. She might be able to help us. Thanks. I appreciate the help. 
All right, let's rock and roll. We know the plan. Let's head out to the NSTB warehouse. NSTB is a weird, weird acronym. But uh, let's, uh, hold on before we go. Let's go tell Mr. Delilah that we got his gems. Mr. Delilah is small and tough with an untraceable shoddy on his back and a heavy vest under his trench coat. He's got the air of someone who gets things done and occasionally does them himself. He might be an ex-runner, one of the rare ones smart enough to move over to management when he felt his reflexes slowing down. Mr. Delilah, we have business to discuss. What business? I ain't got no business with you. We're with Coyote. She's indisposed at the moment. The mention of Coyote, he finally gives you his full attention. Why didn't you say so? Coyote's late and my client's getting anxious. Where is she? Downstairs, trying on a new arm. Her run went south for her. No kidding. Well, whatever. She's tough. She'll pull through. So who are you two? I'm Mac. He's Paco. Great. We're all introduced. Now give me the stones. We're not getting paid for this. In an instant, there's a jeweler's scope on his eye. Moving quickly through what appears the most valuable stones, he stops when he finds what to be an ordinary pebble with Hebrew characters. That's the one. He pocks it. Okay, you did the job, but you're late, and Coyote knows that's the case. Late equals no payment, but I'm feeling monogamous tonight, so you guys can keep the gem you already pocketed. You're good, man. Looks you up and down and takes you all in. Listen, you look like the sort of man who might run a crew of your own someday. I need a little talent. When that happens, come talk to me. I'll set you up. He looks impressed. I know a fence for those gems, Van Grass. Follow me. Sure, Paco. Let's go. Where's the Where's the guy? Paco, where'd you go? Oh, there he is. I almost passed him. Van Grass is busy talking on his comment, checking his heads-up display and motioning to a runner he's standing nearby, all at the same time. He's an intense little man, and you get the sense that he likes to look busy. I'm Van Grass. Make it quick. Biz is good. Talk to me. We have some pretty things to sell. You'll want to see them. I have a fondness for pretty things. Let me look. You the servos in Van Grass's cyber eye whirr as the magnifying lens slips into position. He bends his head over the two stones for two seconds, maybe less. Hmph, <laughs> where'd you get this trick? A gumball machine? I'll give you a thousand for them. Sounds good. Pay me. I can't argue. Give me your cred stick. I'm gonna head back downstairs, and I'm gonna go get hacked up. Maybe get myself some sweet new legs. Alright. <whistles> Hell yeah. Alright. Let's go visit Dr. Castle. I want some cyberware. Now that I have more money. Silver tech. Basic replacement limbs. Not bad. Dermal plating. Bone lacing. You know what? Let's do this. Let's get some cyber tech arms. Right one. You know, let's get some magnification eyes while we're at it. Might as well. Yeah, see, um, the way Shadowrun works is you, you're, every person, human being or whatever, has essence. And essence is sort of the measure of your soul. And the more cyber parts you have, the less essence you have. Until you get closer and closer, I mean, those really jacked up runners will have point one essence. They're just barely hanging on to their humanity. And the more, the more essence you lose, the more disconnected you get from humanity, and the worse off you are in the long run. But um, it also is directly influences how well you cast spells. Since Mac's not going to be much of a spellcaster here, I'm going to just hack him, splice him up full of stuff. Now, Cyberware causes Essence Last. Yep, it affects the magic rating of your character. Uh, magic is very important for spellcasters. Doop, 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 doop. Okay. So this game, uh, in the actual RPG, once you get completely hacked up and uh, basically nothing but wire... Oh, look, my arm is actually... That's super cool. I want to check that out. Look at... No, I can't. Oh, wait, here. This. Look at that. I got a big metal arm now. It's pretty cool. 
probably see, oh, I can see my eyes, my cyber eyes. All right, well, anyway, let's spend my karma too while we're here. Ranged combat three, that seems good. Uh, assault rifle three. Full auto if weapons permitting. And let's increase dodge too while we're at it. All right, cool, we're good to, we're ready for war. Let's head back upstairs and then let's head out to the warehouse. See you later, Paco. You weren't that helpful, but you weren't complete shit. Yes, indeed. Alright, I think that'll be it for this episode. That one wasn't super exciting, but we met a lot of interesting people, and um, I got my arm hacked off. So it was pretty important, exciting for me. I'll see you guys next time.